Hello, beautiful family. How are you doing? Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. I just can't thank you enough. So, my colorlistic people, today we are having a very high personality in our midst. A special person. It's no other person that barrister. I love you, AJ Marco. You are highly welcome, sir. Let's go on. Hello. I'm speaking to you today from a remote location. I am sorry I'm not able to be amongst you uh, physically, but I'm with you virtually. Thank you very much, sir. But I don't understand. And to which or to whom are you addressing? Because we don't understand. It looks like that is the location of uh, Brosfem. But let somebody that is aware of how Brosfem where about and where his office is, let that person tell us. This is to see Bruce Fem. Hey, Mr. Bruce Fem, welcome. So you are not aware that there is a meeting, special and important meeting happening in your location. You are not aware. And Mazina Dikanu did not thought it twice to inform you, being that is your location, you should be the best person to, to, to represent him. Is now barrister Aloy Ejemako now reminding Mazena the Kanu about a wonderful meeting that he can go there and communicate about his release. Oh, barrister, ah ah, Bruce Fem, why? So you left your work you're supposed to do and you are doing another work. Anyway, let us hear from a uh, barrister Aloy Ejemako. Before I start, let me observe the basic protocols by acknowledging the ambassadors for safe determination, the coalition of Biafran sons and daughters, the friends of Biafra gathered here today at the Washington Press Club, Washington DC, United States. Yes, thank you very much, sir. That is very correct, sir. So what is the subject matter? What did Mazina Dikanu sent you to discuss with them? Did he say you should speak about uh, the Republic government uh, in Neza in USA? Please, let us also know because we are eager to know. Yeah. And calling for the release of Mazina Dikanu, who is the subject matter of this very event today. Of course, there are other subject matters, such as the right to save determination and the persecution that is being levied against Christians in Nigeria in this current era. Ben and Evans, I thank you, and I thank all those who are behind you, seen and unseen. And you're thank you very much, sir. Uh -uh, you are doing a great job. Bruce Fem, Bruce Fem, how many times did I call you? So you are not aware about this meeting, eh? You are not aware. Bruce Fenn has come up. I went to see him. To see how we could link him up with a lawyer in Nigeria so that that lawyer can take cases to court and this man can go to defend Onyendu. That was why we went. Agbragada <laughs> Giligba. You are looking for someone that is speaking already on behalf of Bruce Fem. Bruce Fem is there running up and that looking for who is not pursuing. Please let us continue. When was the last time Mazina Dikanu came to Nigeria? Please tell us, wonderful barrister. And when was the last time you met with Mazi in Namdekanu? Well, last week I met with Mazi in Namdekanu at the headquarters of the Directorate of State Security in Abuja, Nigeria. And I did inform him of this event coming up. And he was very happy. And he asked me to ensure that I speak and do a video to be played to the participants in this event. Thank you very much, sir. We are listening. So today I'm wearing two hats. I'm speaking on behalf of Omanam Dekano. I'm also speaking on my own behalf. My name is Aloy Ejimako. I'm the special counsel to Mazin Namdekano and the indigenous people of Biafra. And I'm speaking to you from a location in Nigeria. The man, Mazin Namdekano, is well known. He's everywhere. He's on Wikipedia. He's an internationally acclaimed freedom fighter. But there are just a few things I need to tell you about him. What brought him to limelight 
was the formation of the indigenous people of Biafra in the United Kingdom in 2012. Simultaneously, he also founded Radio Biafra. And these two organizations were aimed at one thing, liberation for the people of Biafra, or restoration of the former Republic of Biafra that went defunct in 1970. The right to self-determination is a right that is guaranteed internationally, domestically, and continentally. It's within the black letters of Nigerian law at Article 20 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. The right to self-determination is guaranteed. So the formation of IPOB did not break any law. Not laws of the United Kingdom, not international law, not Nigerian law. Thank you, sir. So what happened next? I'm the Kano, who was born in Nigeria but who acquired British citizenship later on, came to Nigeria in October 2015. The government of President Muhammad Buhari, which had come to power in May, decided to arrest him. He was not arrested between 2012 and 2015 because the government of the day at that time understood that self-determination is not a crime. But the government that came into power in 2015 in May decided that safe determination is going to be treated as a criminal activity. So he was arrested in Lagos. He was charged for treason, also for insulting the president and illegal importation of ready equipment. Three charges. The treason one, they split it into two, treason by himself and treason by conspiracy. This thing went on from 2015 until April 2017, when he was eventually granted bail, so he was detained for nearly 18 months. After granting him bail, he returned to his ancestral home in the southeastern part of Nigeria. So what is the mission of uh, the DSS, the army, the police, those crowd that we saw the other time? What was their agreement or their mission? to the hometown of Manze in Abdikan. Returned to his ancestral home in the southeastern part of Nigeria, and he was enjoying his bail, when suddenly, between 10 September and 14 September 2017, the Nigerian army, without any justification whatsoever, levied little massive military operations against Manze in Abdikan's ancestral home. That day, he was sitting at home with, a couple, with, with so many people, his family members, including his two elderly parents. The attack was lightning. It was a bleak ridge. It was massive. And it was not the type of an attack you would expect a national military force to levy on a civilian location. But they did. At the end of the day, 28 people lost their lives. Mazin Namdekano sustained injuries. His parents sustained injuries as well, but somehow, by the grace of God, they all managed to escape. From there, the rest is history. So, fast forward to 2021. What happened next? And because there was a national and international manhunt for him by the security forces, which rules of engagement was to shoot, not to maim, if you see Namdekano, if you encounter him anywhere, shoot not to maim. Not to maim, but shoot to kill. That's what they went there to do on 10 September, but they didn't succeed. But it went on. They went on in a manhunt. So Namdekano was forced to flee the municipal boundaries of Nigeria in search of safe heaven overseas. So what really happened in Kenya? Eventually, in May 2021, he settled in Kenya, he entered Nairobi and settled in Kenya somewhere. He never knew that Nigerian security forces, the international branch of it, were laying in wait for him. They laid an ambush for him. So, so thank you so much. So which door did they use Mazin Abdikani to pass? Front, back or corner? In the laws of any, of any nation. Kenya has an extradition act to which Mazin Namdekano should have been subjected. But guess what? They didn't do that. They rather disappeared him for eight days, tortured him to their heart's content, 
And on 27th June, they secretly brought him out from this location and took him through the back doors, evading Kenyan immigration. Okay, sir. Fast forward to 2022. What really happened? The government was doing was persecution, not prosecution. But the IPOB and its members simply possess an inconvenient political opinion which the Nigerian government was seeking to suppress by means of punishment of some sort. And they asked or directed Nigerian government to reverse itself. Nigerian government never did. Rather, it escalated. Well, subsequently, I went to a local court, a high court in Abia State in eastern Nigeria. I sued the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Nigerian Army, and other parties who were confederates in that attack of September 2017. No problem. God is working for the good of his children. So tell us, sir, what happened in 2022? And in January 2022, Fortunately for us, we won. The High Court made an order. The High Court reached a judgment that what happened to Namde Kano in September 2017 was a flagrant violation of his constitutional right to life and constitutional right to his uh, privacy. And the court proceeded to make an order ordering the federal government of Nigeria or Federal Republic of Nigeria to pay him a compensation of one billion Nigerian Naira, which is over one million US dollars. The court also ordered the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Tinibu. Hey, <laughs> hey. So what did they say the federal government of Nigeria and uh, all the agents of uh, DSS should do? The president of Nigeria to issue a public apology to be published in three national Nigerian newspapers, Tomazin and Kano. None of this has happened. So we kept that aside. In fact, this extraordinary rendition process from you is so sweet in your mouth. In fact, the way you normally expatiate on it. Ah, ah, a lot of people did not understand that all. Please. You have to explain it to the better understanding of everyone, sir. Thank you. Can extradited from Kenya. No, that was wrong. It wasn't. I told people it wasn't. It was extraordinarily renditioned or rendered. And that is against international law, Kenyan law and laws of the Federation of Nigeria. So why this criminal trial was making its way slowly after Abuja? Oh, thank you so much, sir. We so much believe in you because your explanation is so perfect. Can you tell us again, how did Mazina the Kanu beat federal government, DSS, and all the agents? You are in the better position to say it more better. 15 and today, eight years and running, Mazina the Kanu has snagged four major victories against the Federal Republic of Nigeria, with Federal Republic of Nigeria winning nothing. What more do you need as stark evidence? Thank you so much, Barrister. So please, I just want you to round up with the people you are communicating with. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Please Happy give birthday. it all to our wonderful yeah. Barrister, Barrister Aloy Ejema, because so macabalistic people that bring us to the end of this update, you can see this message being passed through Barrister Aloy Ejema from Mazinab the Khan. You can see how straight and special this message is. So thank you so much. Please do well to subscribe, like, and share.